So hi, uh, welcome to my talk. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is a uh, showcase or how we did it story about how we integrated uh, Solar with our preferred CMS. And um, that CMS is Typo3. So something small about me, an introduction. Um, I'm a committer on Typo3. Just recently became a committer on Apache Ticker. Um, was a release manager for Typo3 for some versions ago. Um, been doing Google Summer of Code for Typo3. And um, other than that, snowboarding, mountain biking. And caution, Typo3 evangelist. So, um, so since this is an international conference and it's about Apache mainly, so m many of you might not know Typo3 yet, so I'm just going to give you a small introduction about that. The thing is, Typo3 is very popular over here, at least in the German-speaking uh, countries and then some surrounding countries, so basically Europe. Um, in other continents, you might have other systems that are more popular, but here it is basically the dominating content management system when it comes to open source systems. Um, Hoss, basically, when I met him the first time at ApacheCon Oakland or so, we were talking about this thing, and he was like, oh yeah, Ingo's small hobby, weekend project, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, really, this is the thing which rules the market around here. So, like it says, there are about half a million websites uh, or more. Nobody really knows, but that's what we guess. Uh, running Typo3, we have a public uh, extension repository, uh, central re repository, where we um, provide uh, more than 5,000 publicly available extensions. And then, of course, a lot of agencies are using Typo3 and they have more specialized extensions built for their customers. So, um, a little bit about the community around Typo3. So, as it says... It says so, it's a community-driven development approach. Um, we have conferences in Europe, um, in North America, like this year we were in uh, Quebec, Canada. Last year we were in uh, San Francisco, next year we're going back to San Francisco again. Lots of bar camps and then another uh, very fun event that's our snowboard tour once a year. We go snowboarding with around 100 to 120 people uh, for one week in the Swiss Alps or Austria or something else where we can find a spot to host so many people on the mountain and with a decent internet connection. We are in Google Summer of Code three times now. And um, similar to Apache, we have a uh, Typo3 association which covers um, several projects by now. So the main project where, it every, where everything came from is the CMS. And by now we are also um, having created our own templating engine, a new um, PHP framework, and on, built on that framework another new CMS, uh, which will hopefully lead us to, uh, to the future. So why is Typo3 so successful around here? That's because um, some core features like um, Everything in Typo3 is centered around a page tree. So content is um, organized in pages, and the pages are organized in a tree. That's cool because all your editors already know trees from, let's say, Windows Explorer. They have the tree, they have the folders, and in the folders are the files. And it's very similar to what Typo3 does. We have a tree with the pages, and uh, you select the page and you see the content on the page in an abstract view in the back end. So that's easy to, um, to editors to um, 
navigate and use because they know the concept of a tree. We have a stable, scalable, and uh, extendable CMS framework, basically. That's how we build the extensions. And um, so uh, that means stable uh, in that regard that the history of Typo 3 is basically over 10 years old already, and um, which doesn't mean necessarily that it's old code, because we are still constantly um, updating everything. So with the next version, which is coming out end of this month, uh, we are introducing PHP namespaces and all the fancy stuff. Um, when it comes to more features, why Typo 3 is so popular around here? It's because, let's say, in the US, many companies just need a website that's in English. That's fine for them. But over here in Europe, where dimensions are a lot smaller, where there are a lot of more countries around, com companies uh, needed to have uh, multi-language websites very early already. So there was, from the beginning, there was a, uh, one of the leading features where uh, Type 3 performed very well. So we were able to host multiple websites in one installation. One installation. Uh, we were doing this with multiple languages per website, multiple domains. So everything could be managed from just one installation. We have that flexible templating engine, which allows us to basically really, just like you expected from a CMS, to um, take the content and take the design and just put it together so it, and you are not restricted in uh, any way when it comes to design and layouts. And of course, since we are focusing on kind of um, small to mid-size to large um, companies and organizations, we of course need to have some, some means of uh, user management. And also, well, a lot of them fancy uh, workflows and versioning. And there's, of course, uh, a lot more. So who's using Typo 3? Um, so since we are in a soccer stadium, a lot of German soccer clubs are using Typo 3, and even the German uh, Soccer Federation. Um, and there's Lufthansa, for example. Um, this is the... Um, Lufthansa recruitment portal. So if you want to work at Lufthansa, the chances are ha very high you're going through that. And um, Chicago Museum for Science and Industry, for example, to name an uh, American Typo 3 user. And Skyfall, just out in the cinemas here. Um, Omega, having placed their watches in there, they are using Typo 3. And then uh, HP is using it, or Palm, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so they are using it in the US too. So this is how it looks for an editor, or basically this is a, the view of an admin. So he sees everything, and an editor would just have a very reduced view of that, so he only needs to see um, what he really needs. So this is the tree I was talking about. So it's very easy to, to see the structure of the site. And then um, on the right, you have some abstract view of the design of the certain areas of, of a website where you can place your content elements. Chips was a certain set of basic content elements, which are very common, like text, text versus image, uh, bullet lists, stuff like that, the very uh, basic stuff you need everywhere. And so there's an introduction package you can download. Just try it out. Um, it's even possible to uh, select the color if you don't like red. So you might like blue, like Hoffenheim. Um, make it uh, fit your needs, and make it uh, fit your taste, and then uh, just play around, around with it, maybe. So but this is type of three. It's a great CMS, but certainly um, 
why we are here, because um, its built-in search needed some improvements. And that's where we get, get to talk about um, Apache Solar for Type 3. That's what we were, were uh, working on for the last uh, three and a half years now. So the built-in search is called index search, and in fact, the cool thing is, the guy who founded Typo3 like over 10 years ago, he already was building a inverted index just like Solar is using it today. Not that, uh, not that fast, of course, and it's built inside a in, uh, database, which is certainly not suited for doing this kind of stuff. But if you really look at it, it's funny because it really resembles the, the basics of an inverted index. It's just not fast anymore. So there were other alternatives already, like other people also had the need, uh, this thing is doing, it's not doing what we really want, it's not fast enough. So people are, were already looking out for other solutions like Swing or MNOGO search, and they built all kinds of uh, implementations for that, but nothing really uh, suited our needs. So we were also looking around, and then we found Solar, and it made us freak out. So I think I don't really need to talk about why we were freaking out about Solar because of all the features. Speed, of, of, of course, was a lot faster, and we had um, synonyms and all kinds of stuff, faceting, of course. Um, elevation and all that stuff, great stuff. So we, we, we set out, okay, this is the tool we want to do, and um, uh, we built a prototype in the summer of 2008, went to some customers, showed it to them, what do you think about it, do you like this, and they were all like blown away by it. So, and we thought, okay, this really seems to be the one thing we want to use. and. Um, since we also noticed or thought about, well, um, this, if we want to really do this, we really need to do this right. And if we want to do this right, this is not going to be a, just a weekend project. So we set out, uh, talked to other agencies we were friends with, and also showed it to them, and uh, we're like, okay, what do you think about this? Don't you maybe want to... Um, worked together with us, and um, they were all cool about it. So we set out and um, talked, talked them into, like a, um, we called it the Early Access Program. From that, we um, had the kickoff in early, uh, early 2009. Started the Early Access Program, where it basically works like, well, we can't live from love and air just, and we still wanted to do open source, but that was basically the means how we were um, trying to, to finance that. So the other agencies who would like to use that, they were chipping in with a certain amount, and they got, um, like the, the name says, they got an early access on, on the extension got an SVN read access, and we were promising to publish the code at some certain point. So, and then after just maybe half a year later, there was the Type 3 conference in 2009, and for that, we released version 1.0. Our goal for that was just acts like index search, basically drop in replacement for the built-in uh, search engine which worked out pretty well, actually. So Solar really allowed us to um, get to results very fast. And actually, um, for the version 1.0, it did even more than just act like index search, because we already had a way more flexible way of templating in there. And we had faceting in there, and sorting, and synonyms, and all the stuff uh, that Solar offers for us. But then you were like, hmm. In version 1.0, we were, as, as I said, acts like index search, and what index search does, it's basically crawling the website, or when the website 
uh, is rendered, it's indexing it afterwards. So we were like, mm, this doesn't really seem like the way to go for us. We need some more intelligent way to do this. And of course, there were solutions to that already in the Type 3 environment, like um, there was a crawler extension, but the thing is, it was hard to configure, and it was dump. Dump in a way that it was, would be crawling the whole website maybe once a day, twice a day, whatever you configured it to do, but it still didn't know what really changed, so it had to brute force index the whole website. It had to crawl the whole website every time. And we thought, that's not the way to go. Uh, we need a more clever solution. So we set out and got the idea of the index queue. What that means, um, I'll explain it a bit later. So we also thought about, so what do we really need to implement solar for typo 3? What do we uh, need in terms of components. So we identified like these five components. Of course, first we need to index our content and we need to search it. And since the built-in search was limited in the way you could present your um, search results, we needed a flexible way to uh, template the search results. And of course, what's worse, your, the best search engine you have if you can't uh, decide on how to improve your search results or how to improve the search experience for your users. So you still want to know what are your users searching for and um, where are the uh, misses, where are the keywords with no results and stuff like that. So we need analysis and statistics. And for day-to-day -day, day -day use, you might need to do some uh, indexing administration like flushing the index, re-index, uh, kick some documents out of the index, stuff like that, that happens. So we needed some way to administrate that stuff. So there were a couple of um, challenges we had to face. And so one of the way, things which really, where Type 3 really shines is the way of page rendering. So it means it's very flexible. Like you've seen earlier on, on the screenshot, you, you can place your content elements on a page and those get rendered. But on the other hand, there's still a lot more ways to do it. Like you can could use a template to um, include from a different page. You could advise the, temp uh, the templating engine to render the whole page with content, content from another page. Um, lots of different ways to place content on a page. So in that way, it wasn't possible to do a simple select star from content where page ID equals X. Because that would have been easy, of course, but it wasn't possible because all of the flexible ways we have to, to um, create content on a page. So we needed to get, get around this. Next, next thing, like because um, Type 3 is used in a lot of internets, extranets, and uh, um, global websites where you have uh, sections with access restrictions, we of course needed to take care about this. And this was also one of the areas where other um, search integrations failed before. So that was definitely a challenge. And file indexing. The built-in search already did file indexing. The thing was just, when it was indexing a page, it was detecting all the, the files linked on a page, and then it was um, extracting the page, uh, the file content during indexing the page. And the thing was, there was a synchronous process, so it was blocking uh, rendering of a page at that point. Of course, it had only affected uh, one user, but that one user might have been waiting a, a long time for the page coming back. So, and another uh, disadvantage of it was that we needed several tools uh, to index uh, several or only a few file formats, like 
it would do a PowerPoint, Word, um, Excel, PDF maybe. And for each of the file formats, you needed a separate tool back then. So there was this challenge to solve, also because there was a traditional way of managing files, and then there was the digital asset management way of managing files. And that was completely different from, from the traditional way also. But we wa wanted to cover both. So, and then, I think I mentioned it already a couple of times, Tapestry is based on the LAMP stack. So that means PHP, and um, there are not that many Java people in our community, so we needed to deal with that, um, since Solar is written in Java and uses all the Java environment stuff. And then um, integrating Solar in general, but that was one of the easiest things. So how did we do this? Um, for the page rendering, now we get to this point of the indexing queue. There's a central component in Typo 3 called the Typo 3 core engine, and everything, uh, every change you do on the content, on your records, goes through that. So this is a central point where we could hook in and watch all the changes come by, and through some configuration, we can then decide, okay, this is a change that we need to monitor. This is um, a product, and we, we are monitoring products because we're indexing them. So the record monitor was sitting in the, or is sitting in the uh, Type of C core engine, watching the changes, and then if something com comes by, we need to monitor, we need to index, it just puts it in an index queue. And from there, we just have a um, scheduler task that um, works the index queue. Scheduler is um, one of the components in Typo 3 that allows you to flexibly um, define tasks in your extensions that need to be executed repeatedly at certain times of the day, a week, basically like Cron. But before we had the scheduler, you would have needed um, a single Cron job for all for each of these tasks. And now we just need one. Uh, cron job for the whole installation, and every extension can hook into the scheduler, and the scheduler takes care of executing whatever task needs to be executed at whatever time. So this is a nice central uh, tool of managing uh, repeating tasks, and we are using that to drive our index queue worker. So in the queue, we have two fields basically. This is uh, the change timestamp and the index timestamp, and next to that, of course, like what record needs to be indexed. So, and if uh, changed, of course, is um, newer than indexed, we know, okay, this element, this record, this page needs to be re indexed. So, very cool, very easy. We now know what has been changed and what needs to be indexed. There's no dump approach anymore. We need to brute force crawl and index all all pages on the site. We now intelligently know what we really need to index. So access rights. That was, uh, for me personally, one of the more tricky parts because uh, since university, I hadn't done a lot of Java anymore and now we needed to think about how do we get Solar to recognize our access rights uh, when searching. Um, we were thinking about sitting together with, with a couple of people, like how could we uh, make Solar handle our access rights? And we were thinking about complicated uh, Boolean queries and OR and AND combinations and all co kind of crazy stuff. In the end, we were like, oh, no, that's, that's not the way that's going to work reliably. And so... We figured, okay, there's, there's no other way to do this than doing it in Solar. Let Solar do the magic. And um, so we found a way to hook into Solar using the plugin API, building a filter which would um, allow us filtering out documents that the current user is not allowed to see, and uh, put that in a query parser plugin, 
have horse review it. And um, I think you were Ill at that conference, right? And I was like, ah, go away, leave me alone. But it was cool. Um, it works. We haven't really done any changes to that anymore. And so that was really nice for me personally to get back to do, doing some Java and was lots of fun again. And um, yeah, we are satisfied with that solution. And I was talking about the challenges with file indexing, with the different ways, typos we can handle, file management, and uh, that we needed a lot of different tools. And um, so we again set out looking around for tools that could help us here. So now Typos we offers a service architecture where you just say, okay, give me a service, uh, for metadata extraction for some PDF file I have. Or I have a uh, Word document here. Can you give me a service that can do content extraction? So that architecture was in place already, and we stumbled over Ticker, obviously. And so that was awesome. For those of you who don't know Ticker, it's a content and metadata extraction toolkit. and uh, on the side, it also detects uh, the language of a, uh, of a string of, a, of some con content. So apart from Apache Solar for Typo3, we now also created um, Apache Ticker for Typo3 as a separate extension. And that helped us to um, solve all the problems at once we had with file indexing. So we were just connecting Ticker as a service in Typo3, hand it over the file we were trying to index, and we would, get in, we would be getting back the content of the file or the metadata. So very cool, very, very nice. And then we still had to resolve this, the, the problem of like um, the synchronous process of indexing the files during indexing. I mean, now that we had the, the index queue already, that was basically not a big problem anymore because the indexing is now happening um, hidden from the user, so no user is um, noticing anything anymore anyway. But it still felt like, hmm, if we need to index all the files during indexing, during page indexing, that would slow down our indexing process. So we just created another uh, file indexing queue where we put all the files in there with references to where uh, on, a, on which page the file was uh, linked and stuff like that. And then we have a separate uh, index queue worker for the files. So PHP people and Java, what do we do about them? We simply uh, put together a bash install script which downloads Tomcat, downloads Solar, downloads our configuration files, uh, the, downloads the uh, um, query parser plugin, puts everything into place, fires up this, uh, the Tomcat, and it's ready to go. So this is very cool. Uh, localhost 8080 slash solar um, with some core already. And by now, we had contributions from the community uh, that allows us to provide parameters for the install script so the user can say, install solar.sh, uh, German, English, Dutch, whatever language you need, and it would also download the configuration files for that. And then, of course, uh, when you install the extension, it's uh, set up uh, by default to connect to localhost 8080 solar. So for the user, it's very easy to integrate solar with Typo3. They install the extension, include the configuration, fire up the bash install script, and basically ready to go within five minutes or so. And then to speak to Solar, um, since it's HTTP, that's awesome. And we found a nice uh, PHP library, which we still think is probably the way to go if you want to do it in PHP. It's Solar PHP client. Um, Works, perfect. What do we have now in the extension? There would be um, faceted search from the beginning in a very flexible way. So like 
It's easy to configure it. Um, the basic configuration you need is you need a label for a facet, and you need a field on what to facet on. And that's the basic stuff you need to configure. And from there, you can easily say, OK, I want this, these facet options to be ended, or you could say, say uh, you can select uh, multiple facets, fa multiple options from one facet, connecting them with OR, or um, um, do it like uh, on and off. So if you select a facet, you select it, if you click it again, it's get, it gets deselected. Um, you can do it, uh, list all the facet options, click one, apply this filter, click another, uh, take that filter off again, and apply the new one. So it's very easy to um, just configure whatever kind of facet you want to have. File indexing, um, we use that uh, to drive our early access program um, to basically make people still join the access, uh, early access program and um, provide us some um, um, money to, dry, to, to cover the, the, the running costs. Um, so the file indexing is currently only available in the early access program, and, um, but everything else is almost, no, it is free. And multi-language support, basically out of the box. We do it in the approach where you have one core per language. There's this other approach where you put everything into one core, but uh, have prefixes or postfixes on, on your field names to identify what, what language you are using right now. Um, personally, we like the, uh, the approach with the different cores better, and um, that works very well for us. And did you mean, of course, highlighting in the, in the in the search results, of course, and then typos we can also highlight uh, the, the search term on the final page on, on the site somewhere. Autocomplete suggestions, access rights, um, more like this. Right now, uh, we are going to start working on uh, geo search. Basically, I think there's pr pretty much nothing we've left out now. Okay, um, sh some showcases. This is uh, typo3-solar.com. That's our project and showcase site, basically. What we did here is um, we took the typo3 mailing list and indexed them. So this is right now maybe 250, 300,000 emails indexed. Um, you can filter by uh, what news group, uh, what authors, stuff like that. Very, very nice to look up stuff. So this is um, SEB Asset Management, a, um, I think it's a Swedish uh, bank, where they had some stuff like you can look up uh, fonts by their uh, number, and um, they had some, they were uh, on solar very early already um, with some nice needs to the templating engine. So that was, was um, interesting to implement. They are also using um, statistics basically to drive this tag cloud of uh, commonly, commonly searched terms. And uh, the Lufthansa recruiting portal um, where um, we were integrating external RSS feeds with um, job openings and stuff like that. And also cool is, um, it might be a minor feature, but still very cool. They, like here, we were searching for stewardess, but the thing is, stewardess is not mentioned once on the whole site. So basically, that's the thing people are looking for, but um, it's not the correct term in their lingo. So uh, obviously, we are using synonyms here. And we always had the idea, maybe we should put in something like a uh, juice pusher or something like that. That's a kind of um, not so nice word we, we, we would use in, in German. But um, until now, we haven't done that. So um, That's one of our 
bigger projects we've implemented with Solar. Sartorius, um, they provide um, uh, tools and uh, stuff for laboratories. And um, so what we did here, if you browse the products section, basically, you find a lot of um, listings with uh, products that you can filter and sort, and that's all driven by solar in the background. So right now, we've also gone to not use solar just as a simple search engine, which you might think that's the obvious thing to do. But um, we now also use solar to replace um, extension development uh, parts and use it for lists that need to be filtered, sorted, searched, and so on, where we would have done um, extension development like in, in PHP before. So now we just um, put in some configuration, index our data, and put it out using our templating engine. And then um, the last one, another example where we are not using, where we are using Solar not as a search engine, but rather um, leverage all the, the cool features um, to filter, um, in this case, downloads like um, brochures, uh, videos, photos of um, um, a Torch. They are building these um, farming machines stuff, and this is just a nice use case. And um, that's about it. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. So the question was about how does our access filter work? Of course, we were looking around too in this case. I think there's a, a Lucene connector framework, it's called, I think. But that was um, too complicated for us and too much uh, work to integrate. So what we do is, if you think about the tree again, in, in Type 3, you can set permissions on each page and then even down on each um, content element on a page. So what we do is, when we index a page, we walk up the tree and collect every um, um, access restriction that might be set on a page. And from that, we form a path which, is, which we call the access root line. And that access root line is stored within a document in the solar index. And uh, when, when we search, when we query the solar index, um, we know the, the permissions of the current user. And then we just um, split the path again and make matches um, on, on each element of the path. And if there's a mismatch, we filter out that document. Okay. All right, thank you, Ingo.